Heading out to Anderson County, officials responded to the scene of a deadly crash involving two tractor trailers. The accident happened on I-85 north of Liberty Highway near exit 21. The coroner says two people were thrown from the vehicle and died at the scene. They have been identified as 47-year-old Tracina Young and 51-year-old Frederick Stiles. Officials say the tractor trailer Young and Stiles were in rear-ended another tractor trailer that was experiencing mechanical issues. Officials say several other vehicles were also involved in the crash. Right now, this is an ongoing investigation. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Uh, it's funny. It's funny, you know, us truck drivers being in in places of of situations that happen, you know. A lot of people don't realize that we see a lot of stuff that goes on. And to find out that we was either in traffic or around the situation touches us a little bit more. Like, for example, I did a video. Uh, well, I didn't do a video. I, you know, I recorded uh, from my GoPro uh, going down. I think it was 95. And I was just, you know, going down 95 and traffic on the south side was backed up because of an overturned truck that was in the, you know, that was in the middle of the highway for some reason. I'll say maybe about 15, 20 minutes later, I get I get hit up and say, hey, bro. It's like, hey, what's up? You 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 was just on 95? I was like, yeah. He said that overturned truck uh was my people's uh trucking company. I was like, what? He was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, the you know, the driver of of the truck that overturned drives for the, you know, company that uh, you know, drive for the company. I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, he didn't want to come on and, and talk about it because, you know, he, it was kind of distressful. But uh, here yesterday, uh, you know, I'm in a Facebook group. I'm in, you know, uh, this one particular Facebook group that happens to deal with Super Eagle all the time. They posted that uh, the driver... A super eagle driver was involved with a crash and of course you know everybody in the in a in a comment session everybody in the post you know they was you know they was cracking on you know super eagle truck once again but this time we with more details this time we come to find out that it was uh it was team drivers tanisha uh young and her co-driver uh frederick styles uh that was involved in the crash um this also goes to you know how it goes to show how important you know driving i, I don't I, i'm not going to speculate because i i don't know we we don't have no more details than what we got as far as what was the cause of the crash but it's still you know with the with the information that's being brought out there kind of hint to maybe driver fatigue but you're here to say that it was a uh, a malfunction so can you uh you know, give a little bit of what you found out about the uh, about the about the crash. Well, the my side of the story is seems crazy enough because I was going. I picked up my load out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, uh, Friday evening, and I left out of Elizabeth, New Jersey Saturday morning, and I had a one a.m. appointment Monday morning in Athens, Georgia coming down 85 south, um, about, I'd say about 45 miles, 30, 45 miles north of that accident. I was driving and I looked in my left mirror and I seen a Cascadia pulling a Super Eagle trailer 
almost rear-ended me. So I get on the radio and say, driver, you good? I said, no, nah, I'm a little tired. I'm trying to get on down here to Commerce, Georgia, to the TA. I said, well, now my truck don't run as fast as you rolling, but this big CB I got you could probably could keep us in range if we stay close. He says, no, nah, my truck running about 80 to 100 miles an hour. I'm about to kick it all up and get the ride. So I said, well, fortunately, I got to pull over, let my dog out and handle some business. And I'm a little tired, so I'm about to pull over and take his nap and get on, get on back up the road. So I pulled over, handled my business, got back up on the road. About 45 minutes later, northbound side, what do I see? The back end of the Super Eagle trailer, the Cascadia sitting out there in that right ditch on the northbound side, sitting at a you know 90 degree angle, and there was nothing left of the other couple's truck. So I'm thinking this driver that passed me that was tired the last two hours ago of me arriving to the scene of the accident was to drive. It looked like a head-on collision. So that was on my mind the whole day, right? Sunday, that this driver that went and had a head-on collision. Because you look at the pictures, it looked like a head-on collision. Well, getting an article to say that the driver had a mechanical issue and rear-ended the Eagle truck. When I passed by it, they was just wrapping the bodies up. This was, when I got up on it, the accident happened around Sunday, 2 o'clock in the morning. I passed it about 3, 3.30 in the morning. I don't need you to tell me how fucking good my coffee is, okay? I'm the one who buys it. I know how good it is. When Bonnie goes shopping, she buys shit. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. It's Man, that's, I mean, when you, I mean, we all been in, been in accidents. Uh, a, a lot of us drivers has been in an accident. Um, but for the drivers that, uh, that hasn't been in an accident in the, in, in seen a, a accident of that magnitude, what does that do to you? Like you, you, you actually saw them, you know, putting the, the sheets over the, over the bodies that was ejected from the, from the truck, rest in peace to, you know, Tanisha and Frederick, uh, our prayers goes out to them. Um, but what does, what does that do to you, you know, mentally? It, it mentally messed me up and broke me down because, again, my first instinct was that super ego truck was the driver that I was talking to. And again, it looked like a head or accident. Because for getting past the accident, there's tire tracks coming from the southbound side, crossing through the median, and then you see the accident. So, that, again, my first instinct was the super ego truck that I was talking to an hour ago before I pulled over. Done got down here and fell asleep and crossed the road until I got the article Monday morning that one of the trucks had a mechanical issue and rear ended Super Ego, which spun that truck around the way he was positioned. So, uh, what what was in the article from what I read? Um, you know, shout out to uh, the subscribers that sent me these, you know, the article. Uh, I got several of them. Um, one in particular, this one right here says, 
A coroner says that the driver of the tractor trailer was traveling north on I-85 when they hit the back of another tractor trailer that was experiencing mechanical issues causing a crash. So what I took out of that was that the Super Eagle truck was broke down and the truck that uh, that the couple was driving uh, rear-ended that truck. Now, my, you know, I had questions like where was the truck as far as, uh, you know, was it on, was it on the side of the, was it on the side of the road? Was it on the shoulder? Is this a two lane highway that didn't have a shoulder? I mean, this is I-85, so of course it should have a shoulder. Uh, was it just, just stopped in the highway? Uh, maybe it was, maybe, you know, they was doing the speed limit and, and the Super Eagle truck was, 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 you know, kind of slow riding and the couple, you know, came up on the truck. Did, did the truck had his flashers on? You know, did, did, did the truck even have the flashers on? I mean, these are questions that's, of course, that's going to be investigated and, uh, of course, going to need to be answered because they're going to need to see, you know, if w what parties could be at fault. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to talk about that considering that, uh, Tanisha and Frederick is not here, but, you know, of course the authorities going to, you know, want, really want to know like what happened, you know? So, I mean, could it be, could it be that it was fatigued? I mean, it was at 2 AM, you know, to, you know, 2 AM when it happened, it was dark. Um, Another thing too is they bodies was ejected from from the trailer. Uh I'm sorry, ejected from the cab. So were they wearing any seat belts? You know? Um did did the impact of course the impact was so impactful that Again, they was ejected, so what you know I I don't know, it's so many unanswered questions in in that particular situation, but you know, mentally I agree with you that it does something to you know, does something to us truck drivers to to, to experience that, you know, to see it. You know, to ride past an uh, uh, accident and to see a horrific accident where somebody, you know, where one of us lose our lives, it just show it just goes to show you how how important of being, you know, a truck driver is out here. So, again, like I said, we we all experience some type of accidents in our in our trucking careers you know some is minor some major does this affect after seeing this because you know you've been driving for quite a while and i'm sure you've seen plenty of accidents but seeing something like this like seeing something like this seeing bodies actually being covered up in a in a in a in a crash of this magnitude does this does this do something to you as far as you want to continue to drive? Um, it's been, you know, a lot of accidents we see out here on this road that will make you change your mind about continuing trucking. And that's all because a lot of people don't take in recognition of how much respect and distance a truck driver needs out here on this road 
And that's all because our bodies of sleep changes based off the load that we are dispatched on. You know, uh, and you have the 10 hour break, you have the A2 split, you know, where you can stop in the middle of the day, split your clock off and stuff like that. Uh, so it doesn't make me necessarily want to quit, but it makes me sit back and put more thought into what have I been doing wrong or what can I do better to where that doesn't happen to me. Uh, I've, from the time that I've seen accidents where the cab comes off the frame of the truck and there's nothing left but the engine, then you see the frame of the truck, then you see the trailer that it's attached to, but you don't see the cab of the truck. And when I tell people that you don't know your equipment, you don't know what holds that truck together, and it's nothing for that cab to come off that frame of that truck. It's just an impact or driving too fast. We are the world that everybody survives off of us. Everything gets moved by a truck. I tell people now, when the pandemic happened, that was just COVID that cleared the stores. But what about the trucker strikes being under? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. The, the things that they are taking away from us is a, also another result of more accidents bound to happen. You come up on a rest area, it's closed down. They got to redo the building. Okay, y'all redoing the building. Y'all not redoing the parking spaces. So we should still be open to park at these rest areas. Truck stops, Walmarts, grocery stores, on the side of the ramp, off the road. You know, not necessarily on the exit ramp, but on the on ramp. And the reason why I say the on ramp is because traffic is not going as fast getting on as they are getting off. We Man, you, you, you exactly right, DeMarcio. And that's, and that's another topic of discussion that, that us truck drivers face again, you know, rest in peace to, you know, Tanisha and, and Frederick, uh, our, you know, our condolences goes out to them from the recruiter call channel. Um, us drivers are facing more and more stress every day, every week, every month, every year, because there is something that's that's always changing in this industry that causes us to speed a little bit more, be distracted a little bit more, be tired a little bit more. And it's all because of of the changes that the industry throws at us every day there are rest areas now if you guys don't know there are rest areas now that you can't even that you can't even overnight in anymore uh my guy d nitty and myself was at two of them um I, of of course you know nobody didn't come and enforce that rule but there is a sign, of course, that says no overnight parking in a rest area off of a major highway. No over, no overnight crazy. parking. How can you say no overnight parking in a rest area? How can a house way? Oh, how house way? Take in a rest area <laughs> off of a major how highway. How can you tell me? Oh, how how way? Take. I cannot overnight park at a rest area. At a rest area, Sway? Oh, How, take Sway? Take now, the other difference is 
that I get on about that needs to, I think, needs to be changed in this trucking industry, uh, since we're kind of on that topic, is I run refrigerated. So if you have, a, uh, you know, refrigeration truck drivers have early morning deliveries. So it's really a lot of times that when we go to these facilities, warehouses, we're out of hours by the time we get unloaded. And you're unloaded overnight, by the way. Then this rule with the personal convenience, they strict on that too. And depending on the carrier that you're with, they only give you a certain amount of minutes to go PC before it turns to drive. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Uh, so you can't park at rest areas because they reconstructing it. You can't park at shippers and receivers. You can't park at your grocery store or Walmart because those truck drivers is affecting the customers parking or we dumping our trash out in a parking lot it's when there's a trash can 100 feet from your, from your truck. You know, so... We can't park on on ramps or exit ramps, so that's more stress. Everybody out here is under electronic law device, so now you're racing up against the clock to get to your destination or get to a parking spot. There's, it's not a major viral going on, but for when you pull up at a truck stop and there's drivers parked in reserve parking spots, and you're you don't pay for a parking spot, but there's none available. I look at that as truck drivers are out here boycotting reserve parking. Because why? We shouldn't be paying to park. Not at a major truck stop. I mean, I feel like nowhere, period. Mom, pop, major truck stop, we should not be paying to park. I. I I don't know, Demarchio. I mean, I guess we can be, we can agree to disagree on on that certain aspect. But but by the sounds of everything that you're saying, uh, the 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 common denominator is us. That's that's yeah. pretty much effing it up for everybody. You know, you get to. I have a. You know, we get to. Uh, we 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 can't park at Walmart's. Why? Because truck drivers throw their 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 stuff out the window, leave trash all over the place, park all over all, all over the parking lot, tear up the parking lot. Uh, we we can't park at you know now again a rest area. We can't we can't park at rest area because why? The truck drivers is throwing trash all over the all over the ground, and there's. There's literally a dumpster right in front of you. I mean, that happened to me. Like, I actually saw a driver, a Western Express driver, throw trash, trash out of his truck. And it was a dumpster, like, literally right across the way. You know? So the common denominator of, of majority of the issues is us. We get... You know, this like you say, you 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 pay for reserve parking, you know, in in the pilot app. You you pay for the reserve parking, you get there, and there's all the spots is taken by us that didn't even pay. But now, since we're there, we can't move because we're out of hours and we refuse to move, which kind of messes up for the other driver that actually paid. And that driver can't get his money back in some cases. But the 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 um some places like pilots, they do enforce it. You know, they like, hey, come on, you, you gotta go. If you don't go, we're gonna have to call, you know, call the police or call our tow company to come and tow you out. You know? So I mean that's the common denominator, you know, is is us. 
you know, as much as we keep telling, as much as, you know, like, you know, drivers like yourself that says, hey, I, I don't agree with paying for parking. I, you know, maybe, you know, I, you know, but if it's private property and they want to keep their private property looking good for us drivers to come in and park, then, hey, you're going to have to you're going to have to kick out some money in order for us to keep it that way. That's how I look at it. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, my company that I drive for pays for pays for my parking. And it's cool. I think all my companies, company I, I think all companies, if you're a company driver, all companies should pay for your parking. This is not your truck. This is their truck. You representing their truck. You're driving their equipment. If you get to a parking spot that you know you have to shut down because you don't have the hours and you got to pay for it, the company should pay for it. Let's jump on Let's jump on personal conveyance. You you mentioned that. Let's jump on that. Companies out here only give you 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Luckily for me, my company would give me the a lot of time to get to a safe haven. You know, you just have to let them know, hey, uh, I'm out of hours. I'm stuck at this receiver. They want us to leave. We'll touch on the receiver in a minute. They want us to leave. Uh, the Nets truck stop or the Nets field is about is about an hour or an hour and a half away. You know, we're in the city. The closest rest area or the closest safe haven is about is about uh, about 60 miles out of the city. And we need that a lot of time to get there. But then again, on the flip side of that, like you said, you know, we're, you know, personal conveyance. They give us the personal conveyance to to use so that we can get to a safe haven. But we're we're uh, we're uh, what's the word? Uh, we 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 get in trouble if we don't use it properly. If we don't put in there how, you know, properly, like how properly can we put, you know, we're going to the nearest rest haven. That's that. I mean, that's about as proper as I can get, you know, shippers and receivers. Well, receivers, mostly they hold us up. They don't respect our time. We get there, especially if you drive in reefer. We get there on time. It's always a, a a hurry up and get there mentality. But when we get there, we're he we hemmed up. You know, we gotta we gotta they gotta unload us. Then they gotta they gotta they gotta count it down, and then they gotta they gotta stock it. Then they they send us a capstone message saying, "Hey, your lumper fee is." Five six hundred dollars. So the company got to pay you for unloading the truck, but you took your sweet time to do it. Now we're stuck. But yet the the guard to come over to you and be like, "No, you can't stay here. You got to bounce, bro." But I'm I'm out of hours, man. Get, you know y'all y'all took six. You know it's supposed to be two hours, but y'all took. Six, seven hours to unload us. That's ridiculous, especially for a load that's not even, you know, 10 pallets at the most. And they all the same product. <laughs> 10 pallets at the most, and they all the same product. They not mixed cheese or mixed sweet teas or nothing. They all the same product. And he just wants to count and make sure what's on the paperwork is on the trailer and let us go. Y'all do all that breaking down and rebuilding it back up and rewrapping it back up at another time. But as long as what is on that paperwork counts what's on that trailer, sign it, let us go. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, man.
But to go back to to go back to on this Tracy uh Tracina Young and uh Frederick Styles uh tragic. If you have a mechanical issue with your truck and you have to get it off the highway, but you need to use that shoulder or right lane to get off the highway, my suggestion would be to call for help to get you off the highway to where you do not cause the accident. Uh, be seen with flashes, lights on, parking lights on. If you're on the shoulder and you don't have a dead battery, keep your parking lights on and flashes on. Do not sit on the shoulder with your lights off, flashes off while you're waiting for a tow truck. You also have uh, uh, your, your triangles, three triangles out there, reflectors out there. They have, uh, uh, they, they sell little flashing lights at some of these Walmarts and stores that you can plug into your cigarette light or an outlet that can probably stretch out there on your mirror. You can wrap it around to be seen. Be seen or you're off the road. We have a reflective vest or your reflecting vest when you're outside. And I work on a truck or check on a flat tire or check on a, on a leak or whatever problem you're trying to see what you have with your truck. Put your reflecting vest on it. The flashlight. Be seen. Because when you don't do this type of stuff, and these accidents can come back on you. Because you mm. haven't been seen. Mm. Facts. Facts. A lot of drivers, especially a lot of new drivers, don't, don't seem to understand that. You know, and a lot of trucking companies, i.e., uh, if I'm not mistaken, what's what's that? Is it JB Hunt? Uh, no. Uh, Landstar. I know I talked to. I, I know I talked to Tamira. Um, she drives for one of these companies that, if you're on the on the shoulder, for a for any reason other than uh other than you know emergency, you're gonna get terminated. It's called the sitting duck policy. And they, you know, they stress that in orientation. Like if you get caught out there on on the shoulder for anything other than an emergency, and I'm, I'm talking about trucking emergency, mechanical emergency, uh, not pull over to the side of the road for a conversation on the phone, or, or, you know, to get out and take a leak or anything like that. It has to be an emergency, truck emergency. If it's not, uh, and, and if you get caught out there, uh, yeah, you're, you're done. You're one and done. I, I thought that was, I thought that was crazy. Um, I mean, I, I was over on the side of the, on the side of the shoulder, uh, when I was with J&R Schwugel. And, you know, one of the, you know, one of the coworkers called me up because she was having a problem. I was like, you know, hey, let me let me pull over, you know, to the shoulder so I can I can talk to you, you know, get off the road. Uh, I was pulled over on the shoulder on a far, you know, on a far, far right shoulder. And a KB truck came by and, and took my mirror with him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. You know, I'd, of course, you know, I had a, you know, I had to sit down with my safety manager at the time. And, you know, he, and he told me, he was like, well, I understand, you know, because he heard the, he heard the conversation that I was having with the, the, the co-driver in my, you know, in my video, because, you know, I got my dash camera, but yeah, he was telling me the same thing. Like, it's like, yo, um, was your truck broke down? I said, no, I said I pulled over because I was trying to give some assistance to, you know, our co-driver. And he was like, yeah, you know, next time, don't pull off on the shoulder. Try to pull off, 
you know, the highway or or a rest stop or, of course, just tell them that you'll call them back until you get to a safe location. So, so yeah, be seen. Uh, be seen because, like you said, that, you know, that could fall back on, uh, fall back on. We don't know if, we know it's a super ego trailer. We don't know if it's a, you know, super ego driver because, you know, multiple drivers pull super ego trailers. No. So. What was it? What'd you say? I pulled up the, I pulled up the daytime photo and I brought it in to the side of the cab of the guy that was pulling the Eagle trailer and he did not have an Eagle truck. He was just, he was under another company or his own authority. Well, you know what, that, you know, that's allegedly now that but that's kind still, of that, he's still under their umbrella. Yeah. It's, it's alleged, you know, allegedly, you know, because it could still, because you know, Ego has different authorities and different shell companies that they run up under you know up under their holdings allegedly let me just say that don't let me just put oh, anything yeah. out I, there I allegedly was a, <laughs> I, I was a i was i was a i was an ego driver and you you pay attention to them there to their trucks there's five six different names on a side of a truck but they all under the same umbrella of eagle put that coffee down Side of my truck said, the side of my truck said Rocket X dividing, but it was under the umbrella of Super Eagle. So, uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. And I wanted to uh, to ask you if in the last few years have you been to any uh big gatherings of trucking events? Because of a lot of our trucking sisters and brothers out here that have been to trucking gathering events, uh, Tracy Young and Frederick Styles has been there. Uh, no, unfortunately, um, I I I went to uh, well I I wouldn't say it's an event, but it is an event. You know, uh, the I, Iowa 80 truck stop has their truckers jamboree every year. Uh, luckily, I was able to, you know, be there uh, two times in a row. Uh, but you said, uh, but you said both of them uh, team drivers. They they was at those uh, trucking events. Have you have you met them personally? Uh, I think it was Atlanta or Texas. I met them at. Damn, DeMarcio, why you didn't say this in the beginning, bro? So this is close to home to you. They were one of the ones that was telling people to, you know, hey, let's get together, you know, own a couple of trucks. Um, I think they actually owned a couple of trucks in a, within a trucking uh, times. Uh, I've reached out and uh, gave condolences uh, to, to his the daughter of uh, Frederick Frederick Styles from the trucking to their family, their condolences and prayers has been sent over uh, to them. Okay. Well, yeah, I I you know did a little you know did a little bit more um, did a little bit more to get a little bit more insight on the young lady and and the truck that she was driving was hers. Uh, it's her company. Uh, she's the CEO of her company. Um, I'm not sure where, you know, Frederick Styles fit in and all of that. You know, all all I just know so far is that he was the co-driver and he was in a couple of, you know, photos with her on her Facebook. They're a couple, you know, if not, if not a couple, they're, you know, they're, they're team drivers, you know. So, again, rest in peace to them. Um the condolences, you know, goes out to all, I mean, to both of their families from the Recruiter Call Channel. DeMarchio, as always, man, thank you for, you know, always keeping me hip to uh, current events and everything. I really do appreciate it. Um, 
as always, bro, we we you know we get something like this, and we definitely gonna we definitely gonna talk about it, my guy. Oh yeah. Any other topics we need to cover to try to get a change out here in this world? Let's let's keep it going. Just keep it going. All right, DeMarco, man. You take it easy, and we'll talk later, bro. All right, Lockout. Stay safe out here, bro. All right, now.